beautiful souls, and welcome back to another episode of Channel Your Lights, Own Your Intuitive. For those of you who are new here, my name is Erin Chandler. I'm an intuitive guide, healer, psychic medium, author, and teacher. For those of you who are joining me again, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm so glad that you are here with me. I have a little furry friend here that is apparently joining us. So... I actually was intending to channel a completely different message, but I'm being hit with some really serious, intense messages. I'm hearing the song lyrics over and over again. It's, I want you to know I couldn't have loved you better, and I want you to move on, so I'm already gone. That's the song lyrics coming through. There are like, intense heart messages happening for somebody. I want to tell you that these are words that have not been spoken. I'm seeing caught in the throat chakra big time is what I'm hearing. There is somebody who wishes to speak words for you. So I'm picking up on what feels like a divine feminine. I'm hearing both and okay, so let's just click, let's just clarify this. I want the message for the divine feminine. There's a divine feminine who's I'm all choked up. Doo -doo -doo. There's a divine feminine who's all choked up and is either having to make the decision to leave, has already left, but it's uh, heart hurts. Your heart hurts. This is a very a skewed message because it feels like it's both. And I'm being told to tell you that if somebody has left you, if somebody has has uh, wounded you in leaving, I'm asking you to trust the divine, trust the divine design that that which is not for you or something better is coming. And sometimes people move away from you in order to open the door to that. This is a lion's gate portal. I keep hearing again, I want you to know I couldn't have loved you better. So dive deeper, says Ava. Mom, this is a heart healing message for all those that have been left by someone or have had to leave someone. When we love people, we love to the best of our capabilities. It's kind of like in childhood where our parents might love us, but perhaps they haven't loved us in the way that we needed to. Sometimes people can only meet you where they're at. Just because you receive less love than you deserve does not mean you're not worthy of more love or deserving of a higher frequency. Because I'm hearing the song now, bring me a higher love, whoa. Um, bring me a higher love. If you are looking for a higher love, that means you have to either remove your or they will be removed from you. Those that do not align for it, be careful what you ask for, you will receive it. And sometimes you will receive it in forms and in ways that you do not expect. You may be wondering what has happened, thinking that higher love means one thing, but it actually means something completely different. So I want to say that this is kind of like an all-encompassing. Ava makes me feel like a heart healing is recognizing trust. When people walk away from you, it's because they no longer need to be part of your journey. Trust that you can only love people to the best of your ability. And sometimes we turn around and we look back and we say, oh my gosh, I could have loved you so much deeper, so much wider. I could have been more forgiving. Maybe I had to set more boundaries, whatever that story looks like. And vice versa, recognize that the people who are loving you that maybe heart woundings, wounds, deep wounds that left deep wounds in you that didn't treat you appropriately or with respect, did not recognize that you were a sacred divine being they loved you the best that they could. I have somebody's father again, somebody's father in spirit, but it's also a reference of all fathers, says Ava. Uh, for those of you who experience a, a paternal relationship or a father figure that didn't love you maybe the way that you needed to be loved, this is not an excuse. This is allowing you to shift and open up the paradigm. They could only love you from the place that they loved themselves. And as we move along consciousness and as we become more awakened, we start to recognize and see that we're all just human beings on this plane, all wanting love. And sometimes for some people, money is love. And for sometimes some people, children is love. And for other people, a dog is love. Love is slightly different for everybody, what that means and what that looks like. But at the end of the day, we're all human beings here having an experience of love. 
wanting to be loved, wanting to give love and receive love. But not everybody can love us in the way that we need to. And they're loving us in the best way that they can. And yes, sometimes, baby, sometimes love just ain't enough. Sometimes love just isn't enough. For example, I cannot love you enough for you to love yourself. You cannot love me enough for me to love myself. It's an inside job. And all the people who are outside of us are either pushing us further into loving ourselves and going within us, or they're drawing us out, drawing the love outside of us. Both and all of these experiences are all happening simultaneously and at once. I'm not sure why love is such a big thing, but I do know it's a common denominator. It's a common thread for all of us here on the earth plane. You all know what it feels like to be totally cherished and loved and wrapped and surrounded in somebody who just unconditionally loves you for who you are, why you are, and what you are, no matter how many mistakes you've made, how ma no matter how imperfect you are, they just love you. You raise me up is the song that I'm hearing. They raise you up. They hold you when you're doing hard things. They comfort you when your heart can't take another step. We're all beings of love. We're all looking for love. We know what that feels like. And I hope that for those of you who don't know what that feels like, dear Lord, please give them this experience because there is nothing like it. Love is what makes the world go round. And what is hate? It is the absence of love. Do you understand why spreading the love is so imperative? I will tell you, my friends, in the last five years of doing psychic medium readings and intuitive guidance and quantum healing sessions and all kinds of different things in the intuitive realms and energy. Something that is very, very predominant is most of us don't realize we matter. We think we're less than. We think we're half of a being. We think that the stories of what everybody told us outside of us or the people who didn't love us the way we needed to meant that we, we weren't worth it. We weren't enough. But that could not be further from the truth. For when you are abandoned, it is asking you not to abandon yourself. It forces you to stand true for yourself. When we are not loved, it is a calling for us to love ourselves internally. For when we have this love within us, it does not matter if other people are unable to show love to us because we have always already gratified, fulfilled that necessity within us. And make no mistake, unconditional love is a necessity, just like food. It is a necessity. Water is a necessity. So is love in some way, shape, or form. It's a necessity. So for those of you who somebody has left you, because this is a very specific message, if they have left you or you feel like they have abandoned you or they have, instead of loving you, shoveled shit on you, I want to say, I need to tell you that it's not because you're not worthy of love. It's because you are being called to love yourself within. They could only love you in the best way that they could. And yes, it fell astronomically short is what I'm hearing for whoever this message is for. Whatever the role or figure, whether it's parental, whether it's friendship, whether it's in love, somebody that you loved, you thought loved you astronomically failed at being able to love you in the way that you needed them to. They, I'm hearing again, I couldn't have loved you better and I want you to move on. So I'm already gone. Does that make sense? I hope that it makes sense. It makes absolute sense to me. I want to go one step further in tandem with the Trinity. There's the love outside of us that we receive from others distinctly as a mirror reflection. And then there's the love inside of us that we fulfill and gratify within ourselves. But there's also divine love. And I'm not talking about love from other people or in relationships. I'm talking about this. I'm talking about God. I'm talking about angels. I'm talking about source. I'm talking about the universe. I'm talking about the in one infinite creator, the vastness of untainted, absolute, unconditional love that is continually streaming to us 
from source at all times. That is the love that you are actually seeking. And when you seek that love, it begins to fill your vessel with absolute unconditional love of the self, because this is your house of self. You are a divine vessel. You are cherished and you matter. Seek the love of the divine for you are the divine. It fulfills and gratifies within as within, so without as above, so below. It's cultivating that aspect. Whoever this message is for, my heart hurts for you right now. I just feel like somebody's heart has broken into a million tiny little pieces, a million little pieces, whether it's through a relationship, a romantic relationship, or whether it's through a family dynamic or having to walk away from family members. Maybe it's in your career or with friendships. Maybe you're crying because you feel like you're leaving a whole world of people behind and you don't want to leave them behind. Maybe that's what it is. Whatever it is, cherish it and fill it with love. Heal the timelines. You cannot cut off unconditional love. You cannot. You can blind yourself from seeing it. You can turn your face the opposite way. But this divine is always pumping and streaming unconditional love into your vessel. Our jobs is to remove anything that says that we are not. Again, I'm hearing another song from before. I believe only in love. This does not mean that there are things that don't feel like love. It doesn't mean that those things don't happen on this earth plane because believe me, they do. That's why we have deep wounds. That's why we're coming back into the self. That's why we are holding and healing and connecting to the divine because that is our wholeness. That is our home. That is our safety and our sanctuary. It is also our joy and our creativity and our abundance. It's this beautiful divine connection, which is at the end of the day, love. It's love and the many different mirrors and facets of it. I'm supposed to shit. I'm hearing somebody say, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Somebody is so sorry. Please accept this apology from whoever these beings are right here, because I'm not talking about disembodied spirit. These are living spirits showing up uh, masculine and feminine distorted energies that are showing up to let you know they are truly and deeply sorry for not being able to love you the way that you deserved or the way that you needed. Instead, they could only love you as best that they could. I want you to know I couldn't have loved you better. And I want you to move on. So I'm already gone. This is very, very clear. They are sorry. They loved you the best that they could. And I want to tell somebody on here, You've actually triggered awakenings for other people. You've triggered awakenings for other people through these experiences, even though it hurt you, you had a heart wounding or a deep wound experience from it. You actually triggered those awakenings, those spiritual evolutions or dark nights of the soul. You triggered those through being willing to be open and to love fearlessly. And this is so interesting I'm hearing a song, I loved you reckless and you loved me blind. They're saying that they recklessly loved you. I loved you reckless and you loved me blind. Do you see the dynamic of this, how that happens? So this is very important for somebody on here. They are truly sorry. You are moving on to something bigger and better. Bring me a higher love. You're moving on to a higher love a higher frequency, a spiritually aspected love, something that is more whole, more healthy, that doesn't require you to sacrifice who you are, what you are, and why you are. Trust in this. Trust in this knowing. If your wish or dream or the thing you wish to magnetize or manifest is love, a partner in love, Please accept this apology so that you can release it as a heart healing so that you can truly focus unequivocally, uninhibited by all of those sadness and sorrow and regret and thinking that I'm hearing you thought you were the problem, but it wasn't true. You were not the problem. You were simply illuminating the things that I needed to correct within myself. This is what this living individual is saying to you. You will know if this message is yours based on the circumstances that you've experienced or things that you have sensed, whatever that is, 
you'll know it's for you. Please accept this message. Please accept this apology. Please accept my sincere gratitude for waking me up, for triggering my awakening, for helping me to be a better man, I want to say. I be a, a, um, there's a song playing. It's a song. It's, there's a lot of songs with this friend. But lyrics tell truths, trying to be a better man or trying to be a better woman. This has allowed them or catapulted them or pushed them into looking deeper into those facets. It's important for you to recognize we have soul contracts with many people. Just because you have a relationship with someone and that scenario happens, you're preparing them for their life partner soul partner, spiritual union, and vice versa. They're preparing you so that when you move into a spiritual union, you are steadfast in your divinity and you can love unconditionally and receive love unconditionally so that you don't have to sacrifice who you are. There is a balance, just as there is an internal balance of the yin and the yang, the receiving and the giving. So too is it in the dynamics of relationships or partnerships of any type. There's a giving and a receiving. There's a give and a take. There's an up and a down. There's one view and one is listening and the other one has a view and the other is listening. There is a harmony, a coherence and a balance that has to happen that is natural and healthy. It is not codependent, it is interdependent. Everything helps each other in tandem based on the different roles that they play with an open ear and an open heart and a willingness to be open to different perspectives, but still being able to root steadfast in who you are and speak your truth and speak your voice and ask for what you need. I did not expect to come on here and do a, um, a channeled message about relationships, but here we are. And these are the messages that are coming through from the divine. I trust that they are divinely timed through spirit and for somebody who is really looking for a heart healing or questioning the journey that they've been on or the experience that they've had with somebody in a romantic relationship dynamic, because that is what this feels like. It feels like a love reading, which I don't really do love readings, but they always come up in intuitive guidance readings and sessions because we're all beings of love. I believe only in love. So friends. I hope that this helped you. Let me know if this was your message. Let me know if it's helping you move forward because that's the purpose of divine messages, helping you to cultivate the wisdom, release the wounds, have a heart healing and move forward into bigger, brighter, higher frequencies, timelines, all those beautiful, abundant, wonderful energies that you deserve because you are love. Until next time, beautiful souls. Mm -hmm.